yes so very good morning right so let's discuss the mcqs in the mtp for november 19 exams the series 1 right mock test paper 1 test series october 19 right we are discussing the mcqs in that particular paper right you can download this uh, mock test paper from the institute website right so first 10 questions are the is a multiple choice question the direct ones and then after that you have 10 which are the case study based okay right yes yes question number 1 ram is practicing in the field of man financial management planning for over 12 years he has gained expertise in this domain over others ratan a student of the chartered accountancy course is very much impressed with the knowledge of ca ram he approached ca ram to take some guidance on some topics of financial management subject related to his course ca ram on request decided to spare some time and started private tutorship to ratan along with some other aspirants for 4 days in a week and for 3 hours in a day right so reminds us of 1111 right clause 11 part 1 first schedule engages in any other business or occupation other than the profession of chartered accountancy unless permitted by the council so to engage and there we have a list of permission granted generally and specific prior permission required in each case the second list right so private tutorship general permission how many hours ratan along with some other aspirants for 4 days in a week and 3 hours in a day right so 4 threes are 12 hours in a week he forgot to take specific permission for such private tutorship from the council later on he came to know that the council has passed a resolution under regulation 190a granting general permission for private tutorship part time tutorship under the coaching organization of the institute and specific permission for part time or full time tutorship under any educational institution other than the coaching organization of the institute so general and specific permission is granted subject to the condition that the direct teaching hours right that is one of the clarification after 1111 right devoted to such activities taken together should not exceed right how much in order to able to undertake the attest functions right so should not exceed 25 hours a week 21 hours a week 25 hours a month and 21 hours a month right so this is the knowledge based question you can't apply your logic over here right so what is the correct option a should not exceed 25 hours a week it is given in the clarifications after 1111 Right. Yes. Question number two. Rana and Company LLP is a firm of chartered accountants based out of Delhi NCR. During the financial year 2019, the firm got an intimation for peer review on 1st July. The entire peer review process, including the on-site review, got completed. The peer reviewer did not share any of his observations with Rana and Company as draft and final report was submitted to the firm. so the peer reviewer he finished the offsite on site review and then before issuing any draft report he directly issued the final report to the firm no we talk about a concept of preliminary report and then there will be responses to the preliminary report put by the practice unit peer reviewer need not share any draft report with the firm if there are no observations incorrect even the final report is not required to be submitted to the firm no no it has to be submitted a copy has to be sent to the firm along with the report to the peer review board right the peer reviewer needs to share the draft report with the firm before finalization right and there are no reports in case of peer review on completion a certificate to that effect is issued right so if d is incorrect option so which is the correct option c right peer reviewer needs to share draft report with the firm before finalization okay next one question number 3 OPE Limited issued a prospectus in respect of an IPO which had the auditor's report on the financial statements for 2019 the issue was fully subscribed during this year there was an abnormal rise in the profits of the company for which was for which it was later found late that for which, which it was found later on that it was because of manipulated sales in which there was participation of full time director and other top officials of the company on discovery of this fact the company offered to refund all monies to the subscribers of the shares and sued the auditors for the damages alleging that the auditors failed to examine and ascertain any satisfactory explanation for steep increase in the rate of profits and the related accounts 
the company emphasized that the auditor should have proceeded with suspicion and should not have followed selected verification the auditors were able to prove that they found internal controls to be satisfactory and did not find any circumstances to arouse suspicion we know auditor is a watchdog but not a bloodhound the company was not able to prove that the auditors were negligent in the performance of their duties which of the following is correct now what does it say the whole time director he was involved no in manipulating the sales of the company so if whole time director has been involved if management override of controls have taken place how can internal controls find out such fraud or error right so what is the responsibility of the auditor the stand of the company was correct in this case considering the nature of the work the auditor should have proceeded with suspicion and should not have followed selected verification no auditor is not a bloodhound right the approach of the auditor looks reasonable in the case the auditor found internal controls to be satisfactory and also did not find any circumstances to arouse suspicion and hence they performed their procedures on the basis of selected verification they copy pasted the line from here right in the given case the auditor should have involved various experts along with them to help them on their audit procedures prospectus is one area where in management involves various experts and the hence the auditors should also have done that in the given case by not involving the experts the auditor did not perform their job in a professional manner if they had involved experts like forensic expert the manipulation could have been detected hence the auditor should be held liable they are giving it an altogether different dimension that management appointed experts auditor you should have appointed expert forensic expert no 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 right in case of such type of an engagement the focus is always on the management control if the controls are found to be effective then an auditor can never be held liable in respect of any deficiency or misstatement of fraud right can never be held liable is again not right right so which is the correct option over your b right the approach of the auditor looks reasonable in this case okay right coming to question number 4 rajiv limited is a listed company have is having business of production of motion pictures for the year ended 18 the company wanted to appoint a gst auditor for the purpose somebody who is familiar with the business of the company industry was to be preferred for appointment that is who would have worked with the company in the past to avoid efforts duplication in terms of providing the information to get the gst audit completed the company had following options for the same please advice right who can be the gst auditor right chartered accountant or cost accountant that is the professional qualification can the internal auditor be appointed as the gst auditor can the internal auditor be appointed no the council of institute has clarified just just as an internal auditor cannot be appointed to do the tax audit he cannot also be appointed to do the gst audit right so internal auditors can be appointed no i just told you that that internal auditors cannot be appointed to do the gst audit both statutory and internal auditors can be jointly appointed for this work no internal no internal auditors along with tax consultants of the company can be appointed for this work wherever internal auditor i'm going to say no right and statutory auditors can be appointed for this work yes so statutory auditors they can do tax audit also they can do the gst audit also but not the internal auditors okay right CER Limited is a non-banking financial company and have been operating for the last 10 years. Right, the company is duly registered as per the requirements of RBI. The company's assets base have been very strong over the years due to its efficient management function. The company is also planning to get listed for which required work is going on. For 2019, the company had closed its books and prepared the financial statements for the purpose of statutory audit in a timely manner. The auditors of the company have started did their field work it has been observed by the auditors that the company's various term loans which have been given to various parties have become overdue in terms of installment including interest for a period of 5 months overdue for 5 months as per the auditors these term loans should be considered by the company for making provision at the rate of 20% of the total outstanding amount however the management has considered a provision at the rate of 0.30% 
please advise the auditors and the management regarding this matter considering the directions which are applicable to this nbfc right so now the asset the loan which has been given term loan that is the advance is overdue for 5 months so overdue for more than 90 days that means it is certainly an npa right overdue for more than 90 days okay right and what do we say once it becomes an npa it comes and sits into the substandard category up to 12 months npa for more than 12 months then it gets further it goes further into the doubtful category and then finally the loss asset right if the loss has been identified okay similar to the provisions which we have for the banks right so you are more than 5 months so it is not more than 12 months so it's going to be under the substandard category for substandard category what is the rate of provision 10% right so provision should be made at 10% okay auditor is saying what 20% substandard is the doubtful category rate what is management saying standard category rate 0.30 right so not doubtful not standard the substandard category rate is yes, provision rate should be used provision should be made at 10% okay pfs bank have was engaged in the business of providing portfolio management services to its customers for which it took prior approval from rbi your firm has been appointed as the statutory auditor of the bank's financial statements for 1819 your senior senior has instructed you to verify the transactions of the portfolio management services while verifying the transactions you notice that the bank has not prepared separate record for pms transactions from the bank's own investments they have to be shown separately the portfolio which you are managing on behalf of the client and the bank's own investment as a statutory auditor what will be your decision for verification of pms transaction so wonderful variety of questions being asked it is not necessary to maintain separate records for pms clients from bank's own investment so the auditor can verify the pms transaction as part of investment verification for bank's financial statements and submit the audit report accordingly 100% wrong as per rbi guidelines pms investments need to be audited separately by the external auditors and the auditors are required to give a certificate separately for the same right in the list of certificates and reports to be issued by the statutory auditor of the bank one of the certificate is also on the pms so in the above case the auditor should not verify the pms transaction till the bank segregates the transaction from the own investments the auditor can give a qualified opinion in his audit report on the financial statements of the bank and report the matter in the special purpose certificate auditor should verify that pms funds are not utilized for lending into bank deposits or deposits to corporate bodies and bills re discounting only so whether the pms transactions are recorded separately or not will not matter for the auditor it is going to matter to the auditor he can give qualified report no right so as per the rbi guidelines right so the correct option over here is b right in pms investments need to be audited separately by the external auditor and the auditors are required to give a certificate search but separately for the same so in the above case the auditor should not verify the transactions till the time they have not been segregated by the bank right this yes. seventh one the auditor should ensure that the board of directors of the top 100 listed entity shall comprise of right top 100 listed entities what does it say with effect from 1st april 2019 and with effect from 1st april 2020 right top 100 listed entities not less than 6 directors right so again a factual information right not less than 6 directors right not less than the 6 directors okay right mandatory now in the sebi lod r next one 50 50 test determination is popularly used in banking company insurance company nbfc stock trading company right if you remember clause 16 of caro which is regarding registration with rbi right it says whether a company is required to be registered under 45 ia of the rbi act and if yes whether the registration has been obtained and when is a bank required to be registered right what do we say one you need to look into the activities second one at least 50% of the income is income from financial assets and at least 50% of the assets are financial assets and then you also need to check the net owned fund requirement right so 50 50 at least 50% income and 50% asset that we check for an nbfc that is the non banking financial company 
Ninth one, see Samir after developing the audit strategy for main car develops an audit plan but finds a need to revise the materiality level set earlier and therefore a deviation from the already set audit strategy is felt necessary. Right, so he wants to revise materiality so uh, correspondingly the strategy and the plan will also change. In this case he would, he should continue with the audit plan without considering the audit strategy. No, they both are interconnected. Right, they both are interconnected. Drop the audit and withdraw from the engagement. Oh my God, what is this? Drop the audit without any reason. Right, just because audit materiality revised, drop the audit. No, they just have to create the four options. First, modify the audit strategy and thereafter prepare the audit plan according to the modified strategy and devise a new audit plan and then change the strategy as per the revised plan. No, first you need to change the strategy. Right, so first modify the audit strategy and thereafter prepare the audit plan according to the modified strategy. So the correct option is C. An auditor's expert may either be an auditor's internal or an external expert. Yes, we say auditor's internal expert, auditor's external expert, internal expert within the team, within the firm. Which of the following cannot be an auditor's internal expert? Right, so expert, we say it could be management's expert, auditor's expert, auditor's expert, auditor's internal expert, external expert. Further, internal expert could be within the team or within the firm. So now they are saying which of them will not be an auditor's internal expert. Partner of the audit firm, obviously it's an internal within the firm. Right, partner of the audit firm. Temporary staff of the audit firm, so again within the firm. Permanent staff of auditor's network firm, so again within the firm. So for the first three, what answer do I get? They are all within the firm. Right, a prospective C is soon to join the audit firm as a partner. No, 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 no. This cannot be considered to be an auditor's internal expert. It has to be within the firm. Okay, right. So that covers the first 10, which are the direct MCQs as such. And now we come to the case study based MCQs, right? 11th one. The Chanakya Bank Limited was having 150 branches all over India by 2019. 10 branches of the bank were already covered for concurrent audit and the bank's audit committee decided to include the below mentioned branches for concurrent audit from the year 1920. Allahabad branch which started foreign exchange business from February 19 and Rai Bareilly branch whose aggregate deposits were more than 35% of the aggregate deposits of the bank. Right, whether the decision of the audit committee to include both the branches mentioned in the above paragraph for concurrent audit is as per the RBI guideline. Right, the decision of the audit committee is valid as according to RBI guideline both the branches fulfill the criteria for compulsory concurrent audit. Allahabad branch falls under the compulsory audit criteria as per the RBI guideline. However, Rai Bareilly branch whose aggregate deposits are less than 50% of the aggregate deposits is not required to be compulsorily covered for concurrent audit. Allahabad and Rai Bareilly branch are compulsorily not required to be covered under concurrent audit as per RBI guideline. So A says are to be covered, D C says not to be covered. And D, Allahabad branch has started foreign exchange business in February and as per RBI guideline, only the branches dealing in foreign exchange for more than three years are required to are covered under concurrent audit. Therefore, Allahabad branch is not covered under compulsory concurrent audit criteria as per RBI guideline, but the Rai Bareilly branch is covered under compulsory concurrent audit guideline, yes, audit criteria, right? So A and C, no. Now B says Allahabad, yes, Rai Bareilly, no. D says is what? Allahabad no and Rai Bareilly yes. Right? So which is the correct option over here? B is the correct option. Why? Because the moment a bank, a branch of a bank enters into foreign exchange transaction, foreign exchange business, concurrent audit applicable. And for the based on deposits, it's only if the deposits are more than 50% of the aggregate deposits. Here it is only 35%. Next one. 
KIC Limited is a company engaged in the business of general insurance and has been in existence for 15 years. The company has a subsidiary company PIC Limited which is also engaged in the business of insurance other than general insurance. The previous auditors of PIC have completed their tenure as an auditor and accordingly have resigned and the management of PIC is looking for new statutory auditor. KB and Associates, a firm of CS, have vast experience of audit of insurance companies and would like to get appointed as an auditor of PIC Limited. KB and Associates is a large firm and have also employed experts, engineers, valuers, lawyers for various client services. The firm is evaluating as to what should be the criteria for get appointed as an auditor of PIC because in the past they have audited only the holding companies and considering a subsidiary company for the first time. In this context, please help the firm by answering which of the following options would be correct. Right, so now here we need to look into the appointment of the auditors. Right, appointment of the auditors in case of the insurance companies. What does it say? In case of the life insurance companies and in case of the general insurance company, not more than two life, not more than two general, and an overall limit of three. Right, considering an overall limit of three. Right, so KB and Associates, a firm of CA, should be appointed by the board of directors of PYC and should ensure they don't take up the audit of more than two insurance company. No, the blanket limit is for three. KB and Associates can take up the audit if the firm is appointed by CNAG and should ensure that they don't take up audit of more than three insurance company. KB and Associates cannot take audit of PIC because they have employed experts which is not permitted as per IRDI guidelines. And KB and Associates can take up the audit of PIC for ens by ensuring that they are eligible to be appointed as per the criteria laid down in the Companies Act for audit of subsidiary company and they would need to submit a certificate in respect of this to the ICAI. My God, where ICI is coming to picture? Right, expert, appointed experts, so no. Right, so what did I say? What is the overall limit? Three insurance company, not more than two life, not more than two general, with an overall limit of three insurance companies for one CA firm. Unnecessarily in the question, they've added the holding and subsidiary thing. Okay, 13th one. KJ Private Limited has a business of pharmaceuticals and has an annual turnover of 1500 crore. Pay attention. During the last few years, considering the environment in which the company operates, its profit has reduced and is still falling. Hence, the management has been looking at various ways to cut the costs. AD and Associates are the statutory auditors of the company and RM and Associates are the internal auditors of the company. Initially, the company did not want to appoint any internal auditors to save cost. However, at insistence of the statutory auditor, the company appointed internal auditor. During the course of statutory audit for 2019, the statutory auditor requested for detailed working papers of the internal auditor to which the internal auditor refused. However, the statutory auditors told the management if the same are not provided, then they would qualify their report. In this situation, please advise which of the following would be correct. Immediately coming into your mind that no. Right, internal auditor working paper property of the internal auditor. Right, it is his own property. It, he did not give access to his working papers to the statutory auditor. The statutory auditor should review the detailed working papers, but they cannot qualify their report on this ground. No, they should not review. There is no such concept of reviewing the working papers of internal auditor. Right. The statutory auditor may review the detailed working paper and even after that they may qualify their report. No, they are behind the life. You review work paper of internal auditor. The statutory auditors are not required to go to the extent of review of detailed working papers of the internal auditor seems sensible. The statutory auditors may review the detailed working papers of internal auditor, but for that purpose, they would require prior approval of the ICAI, Safed Jut. You understand now why ICAI, someone they bring, they have to put point number D, no. Right, so the statutory auditors are not required to go to the extent of review of detailed working papers of the internal auditor. No need to review the detailed working papers of internal auditor by statutory auditor. 14. 
employees of lig have to travel frequently for business purpose so the company entered into a contract with simon travels for managing booking cancellation and other services required by their employees as per the contract term simon travels has to raise its monthly bills for the tickets booked or cancelled during the period and the same are paid by lig within 15 days of the bill date the bills raised by simon travels were of huge amount so the management of lig decided to get an audit conducted of the process is followed for booking cancellation of tickets and verify the accuracy of bills raised by the travel agency may be coming to your mind service organization they are using the work of a travel agency which audit do you feel the management should opt for then you read this then you say no this is something else which audit they are asking okay internal audit as it relates to examine the operational efficiency of the organization management audit as it is an audit desired by the management performance audit so as to assess the performance of simon travels appointed by the organization operational audit as it is the audit for the management and involves verifying the effectiveness efficiency and economy of operations done by simon travels for the organization so when you read the options you come to know oh the question is from the chapter of internal audit management and operational audit right so obviously we want to check the operational efficiency of the controls at simon travels right so d is going to be the correct option right no internal audit no management audit no performance audit what is required desired desire operational audit 15 right zari and associates is a partnership firm what are you looking at how much time is over how much remaining okay right zari and associates is a partnership firm and hasn't been in exist has been in existence for last 15 years The firm is engaged in consultancy business related to various areas and has built a good name for itself over the period. Some of the clients of the firm are very old and who have been continuing since its existence. The business of the firm has gone through various phases. Some of them were very bad, but currently the business is going very well and the firm is looking to expand its operations into different geography. So much story. For this, the firm's management decided that some of its senior partners will move to new offices, and new partners would be included. A team of new partners is in discussion with the senior old partners regarding their joining the firm. The new partners would be interested to know whether the terms offered to them are reasonable. Okay, having regard to the nature of business, profit record, capital distribution, personal capacity of the existing partner, socio-economic setting, etc., and whether they would be able to derive continuing benefits in the shape of return of capital to be contributed and remuneration of services to be offered. In addition, they also want to ascertain whether the capital to be contributed by them would be safe and applied usefully or not. For this purpose, an investigation of the business of the firm was set up on behalf of these new partners. So, chapter of investigation, due diligence, forensic audit, investigation on behalf of an incoming partner, whether their capital contribution would be safe and whether the terms offered are reasonable. Okay, at the time of scrutiny of the record, now this is a case study MCQ. Look at the size. Okay. At this time of scrutiny of the record of profitability of the firm's business, the investigating accountant picked up records for last four to five years, wherein he observed two years which were unusual because the profits during those two years were highly erratic and fluctuating. The inve- investigating accountant therefore went into the profit of last seven eight years to iron out the fluctuation. He also examined the provisions of the partnership deed, particularly the composition of partners, their capital contribution, drawing right, retirement benefit, and goodwill. He also asked the details of the job contract in hand and the range of current clientele of the firm for his examination. Just so lucky, you know, if in the theory part of the paper a question is asked on investigation on behalf of an incoming partner, you can take all points from here. Right. Some of these procedures of the investigating accountant were not found appropriate by the senior partners of the firm, and they advised that the investigating accountant not to go beyond the scope. In the given situation, which of the following is correct? Okay, now four options yet to be read. The investigating accountant should not have asked for the records of the profit of last seven eight years, as that would be too much of the information for his review. Also, the details of job contracts in hand and the range of current clientele of the firm are confidential and hence does not get covered in a scope. Absolutely wrong. 
after finding two years which were unusual because the profits during those two years were highly erratic and fluctuating the investigating accountant should have reported the matter to the new partner instead of asking detail for seven eight years also is not right and is not required to examine the provisions of the partnership deed as these details would have already been discussed with the new partners and they would have checked that wrong right the procedures of the investigating accountant looks completely reasonable considering his scope of work further no changes are required in this approach okay d at the outset it can be said that the investigation in the given case was not required but we'll read the entire thing however even if the new partners decided to carry out the investigation it should have been limited to mainly inquiry procedures by the investigating accountant the investigating accountant could also have reviewed the manner of computation of goodwill which doesn't seem to have been performed on the basis of the above mentioned facts right so investigation only not required no yes c is the correct option the procedure seems to be completely reasonable considering the scope of the work 16 while conducting the current year audit of finco limited the auditor obtains audit evidence that a material misstatement exists in the prior period financial statement so sa 710 comparative information the auditor obtains audit evidence that material misstatement exists in the prior period financial statements this misstatement was related to recognition of r&d expenditure the provision of nds 38 relating to capitalization of development expenditure was not applied properly on this unmodified opinion had been previously issued so last year there was a misstatement what's it reported last year no it was not reported last year unmodified opinion issued the current auditor verified that this misstatement had not been dealt with as per nds 8 right the current auditor will right so we sa 710 when we talk about the reporting we say last year there was a misstatement was it reported yes then whether it has been resolved not resolved if resolved no reporting not resolved modify current report second one last year there was the misstatement was it reported no then modify current opinion with respect to corresponding figures and third and fourth option prior period audited by predecessor auditor and prior period unaudited other matter paragraph right so last year there was a misstatement was it reported no so what will you do current year what you will say modify your opinion for the current year with respect to the corresponding figure because in the corresponding figure there is a misstatement but my opinion is only for the current period right express a qualified or an adverse opinion in the audit report on the current period financial statements with respect to the corresponding figures included therein right so modify current opinion with respect to the corresponding figures right express an unmodified opinion in the audit report on the current period since it was related to prior period no express a qualified opinion in the audit report on the current period modified with respect to the corresponding figures included therein right why only qualified it could be qualified or adverse express an adverse opinion no it could be qualified or adverse right so with respect to the corresponding figures okay 17 Honeywell Limited a listed company pay its key managerial personnel the remuneration in excess of the limits which have been prescribed under section 197 of the companies act without obtaining the necessary approvals from the regulatory authority in this circumstance the auditor while reporting under caro is required to state right so clause yes 11 of caro managerial remuneration where the managerial remuneration has been paid or provided for in accordance with the requisite approvals mandated under section 197 red with schedule 5 if not state the amount involved and the steps taken by the company for securing the refund of the same what are they saying as per caro the auditor is required to state name of the managerial personnel to whom the manager excess remuneration has been paid and the amount involved then name of the managerial personnel to whom the excess remuneration has been paid and steps taken by the company for securing refund of the same 
the maximum remuneration payable and amount paid in excess of the maximum remuneration to the managerial personnel the amount involved and the steps taken by the company for securing refund of the same right what did i tell you what is the reporting if excess managerial remuneration is paid no name of kmp what does it say the amount involved and the steps taken by the company for securing refund of the same 18 you are the audit senior in charge of the audit of swan dive company and have been informed by your audit manager that during the current year a fraud occurred at the client a payroll clerk is sets up fictitious employees and the wages were paid into the clerk's own bank account this clerk has subsequently left the company but the audit manager is concerned that additional frauds have taken place in wages department which of the following audit procedure would be undertaken during the audit of the wages as a result of the manager's assessment of the increased risk of fraud discuss with the payroll manager the nature of the fraud how it occurred the financial impact of the amount in correctly paid into the payroll clerk's bank account review the supporting documentation to confirm the total of the fraudulent payments made and assess the materiality of this misstatement review and test the internal controls surrounding setting up and payments of new joiners to assess whether further frauds may have occurred and review the legal action taken by the management against the payroll clerk who was involved in the fraud and see whether he is punished for his actions so as an auditor of the company what are the points you will look into discuss with the payroll manager review the supporting documentation review and test the internal control you don't need to look into what is the legal action that is later part that is only the later correct whatever actions have been taken right so audit procedure 1 2 3 2 3 4 right so which is the correct option in this case a audit procedure 1 2 and 3 okay 19 one of your audit client vernon company with the year ended 19 is planning to prepare financial statements from the next year as per ndas the finance director of vernon right has conducted the audit has contacted the audit engagement partner asking if your firm can provide training on ndas to the accounts department of the entity this will help them to understand all the provisions of ndas and the transition process will be easier which of the following option needs to be considered by the audit engagement partner right what is the uh, the finance director has contacted the audit engagement partner asking if your firm can provide training on ndas to the accounts department of the company now providing training i think is not it's certainly not covered in the list of section 144 auditor not to render certain services and the day we have those nine no accounting bookkeeping internal audit design and implementation of financial information system outsourced financial services actuarial services management services investment advisory services investment banking services and any other kind of service training services not over there right which of the following option needs to be considered by the audit engagement partner the issue is whether there is a self interest threat as the auditor will receive separate training fee for the service provided the audit partner should decline the training assignment he says no no i can't give training the issue is whether the audit firm would be likely to possess the competence to provide such training to the staff of the entity the audit partner should decline not all the qualified people are good trainers story right not all qualified people are good trainers no the audit partner could go ahead with the training service and disclose the fact in its audit report about the service provided during the period this will safeguard and reduce the threat to an acceptable level hats off to the people who said the mcq right the audit partner needs to assess the materiality of the figure the fees the degree of subjectivity involved if it considers that safeguards like using separate personnel could reduce the threat to an acceptable level then it can go ahead with both the audit and the training assignment right so a and d had d been some more weird option then we could have gone for a but because d is a more sensible option right we delete a and we finalize the option as d right the audit partner needs to assess materiality degree of subjectivity separate personnel could reduce the threat to an acceptable level and do both the audit and the training assignment okay self interest comes when you are providing those 144 services right the auditor not to render certain services right self interest self review threats and the last one ag private limited last one no ha huh. 
AJ Private Limited was incorporated on 21st of March 2018 and has limited operations. However, the capital induction in the company was huge because it would be capital it would be capital intensive. The company is in the process to set up a new plant in Karnataka which should be completed by 31st May 2019. The company's management prepared its financial statements for 2019. The auditors were also asked or called to start in the work in April 2019. The auditors would be able to complete their work by 31st of May and accordingly would issue their audit report by first week of June 2019 as per the plan, agree plan agreed with the management. The auditor have some observations relating to preparation of financial statements which are not in compliance with Schedule 3. And most importantly, the point relating to the capitalization of plant as property, plant and equipment in the financial statements for 2019. Please suggest which of the following statements would be correct. What does it say? Would be completed by 31st of May. So as on 31st of March, it is work in progress, capital work in progress. The compliance of Schedule 3 shall start from 1st April for this company as per Company Account Amendment Rules 2016. The compliance of Schedule 3 will start from first financial period. However, some exemptions would be applicable as per Company Accounts Rule 2014. There should be full compliance of Schedule 3 and plants should be kept as CWIP as per Schedule 3. There should be full compliance of Schedule 3 and plants should be shown as PPE as per the schedule. How can you show it as PPE? Right, it is still capital work in progress. Right, so there should be full capital compliance of Schedule 3, so entire Schedule 3 applicable and should be kept as CWIP as per Schedule 3. Right, so C is the correct option. Right, so that completes the 20 MCQs in the mock test paper of October 19. Right, thank you very much.